about the spiritual path is that oftentimes people evolve at different rates. And oftentimes people have soul contracts that get into partnership to awaken each other. And so, you know, it can be all honeymoon in the beginning, lots of times where everything the person does is cute or wonderful. And then as the relationship evolves, somewhere along the line, especially if people have a long term relationship, many, many years, there's going to be a time where one person's evolving at a different rate than someone else. My partner gets offended when I say I need space for silence. What should I do? <laughs> that's a great one. Yeah, that's the thing about the spiritual path is that oftentimes people evolve at different rates. And oftentimes people have soul contracts that get into partnership to awaken each other. And so, you know, it can be all honeymoon in the beginning, lots of times where everything the person does is cute or wonderful. And then as the relationship evolves, somewhere along the line, especially if people have a long term relationship, many, many years, there's going to be a time where one person's evolving at a different rate than someone else. And if someone chooses to cultivate silence. Like I said, I'm on a ski trip with the family and they're all looking at me like rolling their eyes. Like, was she silent? You know, big deal. <laughs> what does she need to be silent for? Even though I'd been silent for like three years up until that point on Mondays. So when that happens, you have to go to the silence of your heart more than you go to the act of being silent and getting space from somebody because the space is really, again, close your eyes and there's the space. So if you go inward to identify with how you're relating to your partner or to the world, then automatically, even if you're speaking, you're more in that silent space. I totally get it that sometimes we need to check away from our normal day-to-day -day life in order to tap into this deeper way of being. But just like we were saying, if you, if you make this a practice where before you open your eyes in the morning, you go into silence, then your partners are gonna have exception to that. If you're in the shower and you're cultivating silence, if you're in a space where you come back from silence, super happy and engaged, and they realize, well, go meditate. I love when you come back from meditation or I love when you come back from silence. You'll see that uh, it won't be very uh, often that they're gonna take exception to you being in silence. I have a feeling from the way the question's worded, my partner gets offended when I say I need space for silence, what shall I do? First of all, sometimes when we say I need something, it's coming from a more of a victim stance than a victor stance. And so be prepared for attack anytime you're in victim mode or when you're feeling as though you're off kilter. Quite often that's when other people feel off kilter in relationship with you too. So when you see that it's time for you to cultivate this capacity to be alone in silence, have it be something that you actually celebrate before you go into it in your own mind. Don't just go into it because you're having a horrible day and all of a sudden, you know, you're like, I had enough, I gotta get away from you, I need space, I need silence. Let yourself, if you commute on the way home before you get home and then say you need silence the minute you walk in the door, cultivate silence, that inward silence I was speaking about where you might not even be outwardly apparently silent to the world, but where you're observing with appreciation. You can connect on a subway with someone the same way you can connect with that flower out in nature, like those five ways to connect. You can connect via an appreciative heart, a silent appreciative heart that's not judging other people. So allow yourself to know that, you know, again, if you communicate about things like having space for silence with your partner before it's time, you know, you reach the end of your rope and just say, I really, that's part of my life that I like to have in my experience. It, it makes the quality of my life better on every level. Therefore, your quality of life will be much better if my quality of life is better. And talk about it during times when you're not feeling stressed or like you really need the space in that moment. Let your, let your partner know 
time for silence now because it's one of the practices you do all the time and they just expect that they know if you feel like if you know you're getting stressed out that that's one of your defaults okay i love that question because yeah it's always a concern people do evolve in in different ways and have different um things that they'd like to experience at different times in relationship that's just the way it goes you're going to have different things that you want to experience um, at certain times that are not the same thing as your partner. So it's a great way just to cultivate a, a wonderful relationship to, to really uh, factor silence in as part of the experience of being in relationship with anyone. <laughs>